to Uncle Peter's kitchen, where your taste buds will be a twitch, and twitch, twitch, twitch. Oh, I'm lots of fun. Share some secrets when we're done. Secrets. Shh. Oh, welcome to Uncle Peter's kitchen. <laughs> Woo! On oh, my soul, be afraid. No, you don't have to be afraid. If you're not trying to harm me, I have this behind the bedroom door along with my gun. This doesn't make a sound though. This is a what? Do you know what this is? Is this a manure fork? No! A manure fork has 12 across. Is this a spading fork? No! A spading fork has four big fat things across. Is this a garden rake? No! Don't you know anything you're not farm people? This is a hay fork! And why are we using a hay fork today? Because we finished the first cutting up at Chellisbrook Farm and a lot of other people have finished the first cutting. When I was little, we father would hay the back and we have to use the hay fork. We didn't have a bale or any expensive stuff. It was fun to play in and then you get all itchy. Anyway, and uh, speaking of itchy, 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 we're also going to tell you about the poison ivy and how nature helps us with things that are close by the cure for the poison ivy. So I hope that you pay attention and you might learn something if you're not careful. Uh, but first... Oh, going to put that thing down in front of Father. Thank you, Father. That's when he was 92, 42, and 22. Is that something? Anyway, we're going to summon up the love in our heart. Oh, love, 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 love. And we're going to ask our ancestors. Notice we have a new ancestor, James Madison Searle, second from the end over there. 1810, 1844 is a very fine man. And all the other ancestors, so we've summoned up our love, and we've summoned up our ancestors, and we have our what, children? You're right, you listened, a pitchfork, and we're hay fork, and we're off to the poison ivy patch. And I saw we're out here on the side of the road, because I want to teach you about poison ivy, but look what we found. It's a carcass of old turkey lurkey. Well, it did not escape. Some of these speeding people, and they went home to Jesus. Well, it's been feeding some crows. It's a wonderful thing, nature, you see. Something dies, something eats. All right, now, something that's beautiful about nature is the shiny leaves of three. Leaves of three, leave it be. Look at that. See, they're clusters of three. This is a huge amount of poison ivy. You don't want to touch it. Uncle Harley wants to look at it because it might get an infection. It's terrible. But I do want to get some posies for the church bouquet. So somehow I have mysteriously found a new patch of those yellow posies. The brown-eyed Susans, you see. And they look beautiful in a blue vase. A lovely contrast with the blue to the yellow. But stay away from the leaves of three. Leave it be. And... We're going to go to another site. I'm going to show you where the remedy is for the poison ivy because it isn't nice. Last time I got it, I got it in December. I was cleaning out the mill pond and the, some of the leaves fell off of the vine was there. I called up the doctor. I said, I need the prednisone. It was bad. And I wouldn't have access to my poison ivy tea that I'm going to show you how to make. I said, if you don't give it to me, I'm going to spread rumors about you on Facebook. Well, they gave it to me, of course, because they knew I was true. Well, we're going to come back in a minute, and I'm going to show you the beautiful fern that we're going to use for a remedy. Oh, my soul, oh, my soul, I found a clump of the brown-eyed Susans with no poison ivy, so Uncle won't have the itch. I'll have to use that poison ivy tea. Look, look, it's going to be beautiful. And I'm going to get myself over there, and I'm going to chop it and take it to church for the church bouquet. And plus for prayer meeting tomorrow night. All right. Oh, my soul, while well, we're here, we're going to gather the sweet fern to make a remedy for the poison ivy. But I wanted to show you something special. You'll know my car's 15, 16 years old. Well, I think I want to buy stock in the company that makes Gorilla Tape because this is how my car is held together, and I'm so grateful. And over here in these bumpy old roads, I lost a hubcap, but no matter. Everybody down here knows it's Uncle's car, and they're extra very nice to me on the highway. We're gonna cross, and I'm gonna show you the most quick children. You have to look both ways. Oh, stop, look, 
Listen, and quick across the, ch the street, children. And we've got the sweet fern. But what are we gonna do with this sweet fern? We're gonna gather it. And there's no porcupines or anything out here to get us. You see that sweet fern? Oh. Oh dear. There's a bump. Oh, there's a wonderful, look at the details on it. And this whole patch of sweet fern from nature a gift. And so I'm gonna fill the basket with the sweet fern. And after we fill the basket with the sweet fern, we're gonna go and we're gonna boil it up and we're gonna make poison ivy tea. Nothing to drink, you just dub it on. I'll show you, no worries. We'll come back when the basket's filled. Oh my soul, I'm thirsty. Oh heaven, nothing like a good silk panty, especially after foraging for sweet fern. And of course, look what I, a beautiful arrangement of the brown-eyed Susan that I didn't get any poison ivy on me. And if I did, it should be afraid because I'm gonna use a sweet tea, a poison ivy tea, to take any symptoms away. So we're off to the kitchen. I'm showing you what we're gonna do with the sweet fern. Oh my, it's we're back. Now, this is called poison ivy tea. And there's a boiled concoction from the sweet fern, you see. And you just store it under the kitchen sink or the bathroom. And if it has a mold or anything on it like that, does no worries. You just dip some rag into it and you rub it on your poison ivy in uh, uh, afflicted place. So this last year I was not here and I didn't have any poison ivy. That's why I had to have the prednisone. Anyway, what we're gonna do, the sweet fern, it does smell heavenly. Well, we're gonna go up it into my co shiny copper kettle. Get in there, sweet friend. Don't be shy. We're gonna boil you up. Oh, that smells so good. Mmm. Now, people, I know you think maybe that leaf looks like something else. Well, it is legal in Maine, so get over yourself. It, but it isn't that. It's a sweet fern. It's sort of a nice concoction. You see how I've got it pressed in there? This doesn't even hardly cover the water. And I'm going to put it on the stove. Now, we've been using these uh, plop. It needs maybe a little more water. We're going to boil it up. Bang. Now, oh dear, we have some scraps. We don't want to waste them. I'm going to plop those right in too, dear. Children. You can have the pleasure of smelling some of this sweet fern, and I'm sure you were able to help pluck some of it because sometimes it's hard to bend them. We've been using home remedies for decades. So, for example, now we have a lovely company called Bag Bomb. It comes in a little can, or the big fat cow. It's for your cows, but lots of people use it on if anything's cracked. You can use it on the crack scanner. You're supposed to put it on the udder of the cow to make them feel better in the winter time, especially in the winds blowing. Of course, we, we all have aloe plants for our burns. We have a baking soda. You can take a baking soda paste and mix it with a little water and plop it on if you get out stung by a giant bumblebee or those horrible yellow jacket things. And you know, Sometimes, if you have trouble with wetting the bed as a child, just have a few raisins before you go to bed. And naturally, the prunes are good for what ails you if you have troubles. Have a good dose of nice warm prunes. And uh, evidently, that helps the system work. You'll be already fresh and clean. Also, you have the oil of cloves. Oil of cloves, of course, is good for a toothache. Or you can use it to flavor your delicious watermelon pickles like Uncle's and so mine are probably better than yours because I have more love in my heart. Or, of course, if you go visiting around maybe some questionable hotels, naughty people, then you took the oil of cloves out and it keeps away the bed bugs. Well, there's a million things. For the men around, we, of course, want to have our cranberry take care of any bladder infection. Or, of course, the black cherry juice is good for the gout. You have the gout, it's horrible, the gout. Don't get it, it's good for the cholesterol. Well, I can go yap on and on and on and on, 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 but that's our folk remedy, poison ivy tea. Don't poo poo it, because it works, uncle says so. Now, we're gonna go along to our switchel. 
What is Switzerlandsky? Well, don't you know anything? Well, of course you don't know this. It's an old-fashioned, delicious concoction that you drink because you've been in haying in the hayfield. No, I showed you the pitchfork where you have to pitch the hay. Well, you have to rake it. In the old days, you'd have to rake it. Now, our family hay rakes were wooden. But these are, this is some somebody else's family that thought uncle would appreciate it. And this is hand-forged metal. But I grew up with a wooden uh, dowel ones, just that long. And you, after the hay, my father would have poor old Nellie Gray, except to the hay machine, and you have to cut it, and then you have to turn it. Well, if you don't have a tether, you have to do it by hand. It's a lot of work. You do that, and then you get a blister, probably. I'd get a blister at this point. But anyway, you have to stay liquidated and hydrated, and everybody knew it back then because you didn't want to die of heat stroke like Grammy Grouse's father. So what do we do? You take about two quarts of the water. By the way, this is a, makes a marvelous picture of pink silk panties. I had guests on the Peace Porch after worship and we had the pink silk panty. Well, now it's all empty. Wonder what happened? <laughs> we have a half a cup of the molasses. Good old molasses. It's gonna sweeten it. And it's going to be very delicious. So, you see, we're going to stirry, stirry, stirry. And one cup of the brown sugar. Boom. Oh, see, it's dark. You can pretend it's some naughty drink, but there's nothing naughty about it. And grandmother would approve. Then we have to have the apple cider vinegar. Well, I went down to the Limerick Superette, and they finally got some apple cider vinegar. And so it's a half a cup of the apple cider vinegar. It's not like the homemade vinegar my father had growing up. My mother had to make pickles. Then my grandfather would put in little bottles and try to sell during the Depression. My father would say he's peddling his vinegar. Anyway, and a teaspoon of the ginger. Ginger's good for what? If you have tummy troubles or anything. Plus it makes it taste quite pleasant. Ginger. And then you stir it all up. Now, some people call this haymaker's punch. Well, we call it switchel. This is my family recipe from the 1700s. And let me tell you people, the women of that end of the family were all educated. They did more than write their letter X. They had written recipes. And this is a written recipe of the switchel. And let's see if that's all there is to it. Now, I'm not going to put it on ice. We wouldn't have had ice back then. If we'd had ice by the middle of July, it would be in the ice house, and you'd save it in case somebody got a burn or emergency, had to, or something died, like some piece of meat, and you didn't have time to stew it up. Now, let me put that lid on. Is that solid? I'm going to taste it. By the way... Uh, my friend Ralph Appleby gave this to me 30 years ago. He and I say, have the same middle name, named after the same person. And so this is the switchel. See, it's brown, and it looks pretty in that crystal blast. Oh, and it's vinegary and, and gingery and molasses. The sort of glorified vinegar molasses cookie. Let's see what it tastes like. Very unique, but I think I prefer a little of this pink silk panty. Oh, that's so much better. Well, if I was exhausted from hanging in the field, I would drink it because it wouldn't get the heat stroke. So this is your Switchel Haymaker's Punch. It's an authentic recipe from New England, and we've used it for 200 years at least. Well, maybe I'll have a little bit more. What would it be if we mix it together? Ooh, it's a chocolate pink silk panty. Oh, I like that. Oh, this is a very good. Ooh, you see people, cooking is a creative art. Some of you should be more creative. But don't be so afraid of making a mistake. There are no mistakes. All right, now, except if you're naughty, you know when you made a mistake. Don't you be naughty, Uncle says he will know. He can tell. Now, into the sink, and we're ready for letters to Uncle. Where did I put? I had to write them out. I don't know where I put them. Oh, here they are. I can't see the little print on the computer thing. 
Let's see if this is boiling yet. Not yet. All right. It says, Dear Uncle, that's me. I enjoy your show so very much. Isn't that nice? I hope you enjoy the show. We're supposed to teach you something and we're supposed to have fun. Would you please give a nutshell review of your philosophy of food? From philosopher in Phippsburg. Food philosopher in Phippsburg. Phippsburg on the coast is a very expensive real estate, but it's a beautiful church. Congregational United Church of Christ thing. But it's got a huge 200 and 300 year old linden tree. It's a big fat tree right on the ocean. Go and peek at it. Go to church while you're at it. It might help you with some of your troubles. Anyway, philosophy of, a of food. My tongue. In a nutshell, well, let me tell you, my philosophy of food. Mm. First of all, food is holy. Food is sacred. And food is delicious. It should be delicious. And the food that we have, we should know its source. It shouldn't have this chemical messes in it. It shouldn't be this processed stuff. And the animals, if we're having animal products, which I do have animal products, the animals should be very happy, happy animals and kept like at Chellisbrook Farm or at Ken's Hens or up at Mrs. Smith's Farm or these places that we've been on our journey cooking. And the food should be the best quality you can have. It nurtures your body. It nurtures your, your holiness. You're, you're all holy people, whether you believe that or not. You have this beautiful, living, sacred energy, and it has lots of vibrations in it. You want to feed it good and healthy food. So that is sort of my philosophy. I also feel food should be pretty when you serve it, as pretty as you can, if possible. So that's it. I can go on for hours about food, but that's what I think from Miss Phippsburg. I hope that helps you. And you better go to that church because the linden tree is beautiful. You don't even have to go in. You can look at that tree and you think you've died and gone to heaven, but you haven't. Dear Uncle, how have you managed to find such great local food sources from local in Limerick? Oh my God, Limerick right next door to Newfield. That's why I got the, I paid her some money for the Cabot sour cream at the Limerick Superette. They're so nice at the Limerick Superette and they have very good meats too. Anyway, how do I find local? I don't know, wake up. Get your head out of the silly cell phone. You, uh, people riding by today when we're cutting the the sweet fern, they're idiots. I'm waving. Hello, Uncle says hi. These people, they they kind of look miserable, and the person's texting. Please, how are they going to know local? They'll probably go to a big chain and buy something prepared in some plastic package. It's not very environmentally friendly. So it just happens, you know. If you look at the earth, there's something good to eat. If you look at your neighbors, see what they're cooking, see what they're farming, see what they're raising. Use your brain. You don't use your brain. That's the matter with some of you. You need to use your brain. So get out and about and find some good, wonderful, natural and all naturally and immaculate uh, animal pens and beautiful quality chemical free food. And this is how I do it. I just sort of unfolded. I got an email yesterday when I like some natural ground mutton. And I didn't need any ground mutton this month, but it was so nice to be contacted because I know I like their good products. So that's what I have to say. Get out of your nose, out of your silly cell phone, and go raise your awareness and be mindful where you live, who you are, what you value. If you value excellent food, go find some. Oh my soul, oh my soul, the poison ivy tea is ready to be strained. Now, you do not drink this tea. This is for external use only when you get the poison ivy and you just dab some on and you let it dry and dab a little bit more. It's a lot better for you than the pregnant zone that Uncle had to have. Now, this kettle is, high, is a heavy. And you see it's a brownish, greenish, gooey, ghoulish color. And it's a beautiful pot of poison ivy tea. And so what I'm going to do, I got this beautiful strainer. It's one of my favorite strainers from the dump. 
and I'm putting it in a giant kettle my mother bought for me about 40 years ago. Oh, I'm gonna strain it. I'm oh, sorry, that's heavy. Ooh. Oh, it smells so sweet. It's a sweet stuff, see? Well, let that strain in the strainer. Well, that's one kettle of tea. And then, with the leftover green that I'll do, I'll take it outside and we'll let it go back to nature, you see. It'll be a very good thing. You see, that's the old sweet, sweet fern. Remember how pretty green it was when we cut it? Well, it's not so pretty now. It's been boiled. Okay, now we've got to get that back. Ugh. Good heavens. Now, we have the kettle of the tea. Ooh. And we're going to put it in our mason jars. So we have this mason jar. And we're going to put this in the tea. People have been making folk remedies for decades, you see. And it's not hard. It just takes a little knowledge and some calmness being fully present about what the ingredients you have that are around in your home. Now this is a little lighter color, that's old, it turned a darker color, but I used it late, early this week because I was out by the mill pond and doing some gardening because we have beautiful gardens at the mill. But you have to do your work or if it's not gonna happen, it's not magic. The magic's what's happened overnight after you've done your work. What the Creator does and the plants grow and everything's beautiful and the bud forms and the blossoms be beautiful. So we have the poison ivy tea. So um, we'll get high on those fumes. It's very sweet. So to sum up our episode, you say, people are making hay. We're at the end of the first cutting, most of us. We had a very wet year. And you see, ooh, I slopped a little bit. And that'll go to the cows and whatever. Now some people with the little goats, they can hay because the goats love poison ivy. It, I don't know, it doesn't affect them as a treat to them. That's the poison ivy tea, see? And it's the second cutting. We'll go to old poor old Nellie Gray, like my father's hoss and the horses. It's a nicer quality hay and uh, not as coarse, you see. Ooh, that's a good one and another jar of the poison ivy tea. Now I'm gonna store this under the sink. And you know if somebody here, somebody gets the poison ivy, well, uncle will be up with a jar of this and you just take a little handkerchief or dishcloth, you dab it on and let it dry. It takes the itchy witchy away with no chemicals. It's very hot and I'm out of pink soap panty. So I'm gonna have another one. But before we go, I wanna hope and wish you all gobs of blessings. Uh, thank you for being fully present. Thank you for listening and learning something today. And children, thank you for being so observant. Now, I hope you have a very wonderful week. And please stay away. Leaves of three, leave it be. That goes double for you. All right? Sending you love and blessings. Bye.